What are you personally working on at the moment? Cosmic strings. <laughs> I'm working on, we did, we did a video on it, on oscillons, um, that, uh, which I really liked, which are the end of inflation and maybe leads to the creation of all the particles. I'm working on, um, so we, we did a video, didn't we, about on the return of minus the 12, do you remember that? So I'm, I'm still working on that, that idea about the you know, regularizations and, and how, well, it, the, the thing I really want to think about is how string theory uh, or some UV complete, ultraviolet complete quantum theory of gravity, sort of how it kind of protects us from infinity in, in like our sort of low dimensional world. And to really, really want to understand that. We're thinking on what's called the, the RAR relationship, the radial acceleration relationship, which tells you about the accelerations within the galaxy of, of the baryons, the, the stuff you and I are made of, and the total matter in the galaxy. And that's got a funny relationship. And some people think that might be, that relationship might be evidence of modified gravity, that general relativity might not be the whole story. So we have worked together on modified gravity theories and we're trying to see whether that's going to be relevant. Tony, what does that look like? You say I'm working on it. What does that mean? Does that mean you lie on the sofa and just think about it or? You say it. Get up. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so I was doing a calculation today. No, I should, I should. So one of the things I wanted to calculate was, was um, anomalies. So you just sit there with your iPad and your pen and you're just like... Yeah, just do, just thought about doing a calculation. What are you uh, calculating? Like, what are you... Here I'm calculating the, the, an anomaly from um, in, in, in sort of, well, some, some, if you have some, like say QED or something like that, and there's, there's something called the axial anomaly, I'm just calculating that, but I want to see what effect... So that's just pages and pages of you just like... Yeah, playing around. At the end of the day, you've sat there on the sofa and done all those equations and all that maths. Like, what do you do? Do you then sh scrub it out, show it to your mates, or like? Hey. Well, no, I tell you what. So, so my student was saying the answer was zero, and we don't want the answer to be zero, right? So I did. So I did the calculation. I wasn't believing. I just thought, right, okay, I'm going to redo this. Um, and I first got the calculation answer wasn't zero, so I wrote back to him and said, oh, the answer's not zero. And then I read it again this morning, and the answer was zero. So that was a bit annoying. Um, so then, got so you do all those pages that you just showed me, and then it's like equals zero. At the yeah, end. but we don't want it to be zero because this actual anomaly is a real physical. Can you? Is, where does it say equals zero? So you go page and page, and page and page, pages and pages. Where's well, the, the point the, where you realise to equal zero? The bit that, I, that is zero. This. So that was that was the moment where you're like, oh no. Exactly. Exactly. That was annoying. So then, then there has to be a reason why it's, why we're not getting the physical answer. So that, that meant that I had to go back and start to think more deeply about how our stringy type regulators are entering the game. So I went to the board, and this is my board, and I still haven't figured it out because you came and told me you wanted to do some videos, so we're not there yet. But this is the kind of thing, you're just sort of trying to work it all out. But you know, th th this is just one project. We've got lots of other projects on. We, we had a paper um, a couple of weeks ago where we were playing around with um, gravitational wave data, actually. You know, that when the neutron stars event happened where two neutron stars merged and this blasted out loads of gravitational waves but it also blasted out an electromagnetic signal as well as well and one of the things that we can measure is the arrival time of the gravitational wave versus the electromagnetic wave and what that showed was that they're pretty much traveling at the same speed which is a really high degree of accuracy and that had an impact on loads of models of modified gravity and basically threw most of them away right but that was under certain assumptions. And one of the things that we were looking at recently was that if you changed how, say, dark energy fields coupled to, um, coupled to photons, coupled to electromagnetism, how you interpret these results can change. And we wrote a paper about that quite recently. I've probably got my notes on that as well. That, that was some notes I did in an airport. I was actually traveling back from Prague and I, and I just scribbled something down in an airport and then shared it with my collaborators. Let me see if I can, if I can find it. Do you also work on things that you wouldn't tell me about or you wouldn't make public because you don't want your competitors to know or you want to be the yeah. first to do it? Like, do you have little secret projects as well or are you pretty open with anyone who asks? I'm very open. I think that's probably more a testament to the fact that I don't think the, the stuff I'm doing is necessarily going to get me the Nobel Prize. <laughs> um, no, I'm very happy to tell everybody what I'm, what I'm doing. I enjoy talking about it. So. Just the one. So that's you working. That's you just sitting in an airport. Yeah. Do people my... ever look over your shoulder and ask what you're doing? Yeah, sometimes. What do you say? I just sort of sheepishly grunt something and then try to run away. <laughs> it's just like, I don't know, just, 
I know people really well, but it just usually makes me feel awkward. Uh, but yeah, so this is this is my airport calculation, which I then shared with my collaborators, and then we, you know, it kind of spawned from there. Within a month, that, that was a quick paper actually. A month we had the paper out, so that was quite fast. You've just told me a couple of things you're working on. Are there things you won't tell me? Do you work on anything secretly because you don't want competitors to beat you to it, or you are embarrassed or secretive, like Andrew Wiles with? For Mars last year, like, have you got secret projects as well, or are you an open book? I don't think anything I do is that important, to be honest. For, for it to, be, to need to make it that secret. That's what, will, what Ed said. Yeah, is that what he said? What I will say is, is that that airport calculation that I just told you about that we thought some uh, we were, it, it was it felt like it's something that's you know that somebody else could do this, and um, so we need to do it fast, which is why the whole thing we did it really quickly. Yeah, it felt like there was a, there was a bit of a community merging on, on an idea, and we had had the idea, but we thought we might not be the only ones, so we just wanted to get it get it out, which we did get it out nice and quick, so that was good. So nobody did it, did it before us in that sense. Have you ever been approached by a number fire or sixty symbols fan, and if so, do you mind when it happens? Oh, it's fantastic. I'm not <laughs> we're not that well known, <laughs> but but it does happen. Uh, I don't know a couple to. I got. I was at a train. I was at an airport coming back from Europe, and um, there was somebody selling credit, trying to get people to sign up for credit cards, and and he came towards me, and I'm thinking, oh, whatever, and and I thought, well, I don't want a credit card, and I'm leaving the country, and he came up and he said, um, you did number file videos, don't you? And and I said yes, and he said, you got me into uh, graduate school at Princeton, and he said I was scared of maths. And he said, your videos, and others, but he said, your videos reminded me that maths is really fun. And um, he said, so I plucked up the courage and I applied. And he was doing psychology or something, but it got, it got him into print, to a, a course in Princeton. Have you ever had any number file or 60 Symbols fans approach you? If so, did you mind when it happened? Loads of times, yeah, loads of times. Uh, I don't mind. The, the, you love it. Uh, well, I'd say I, it, it's kind of flattering, but what, what I will say is, is so I think the people I'm with tend to love it more. Like my kids think it's absolutely hilarious. And then they, they just start the wind up afterwards, like, and they sort of say, oh, you loved that, didn't you? And all this. And I'm like, no, I'm cool with it. And it's like, uh, so. What about so, when you're with your football mates? That has happened too, right? You know, it's, uh, it's, it's. It's just, everyone just sort of like, just sort of starts taking the mickey. The second time we were in Aspen, which is a fantastic place anyway, but to do theoretical physics, we've got an Aspen centre. And we were up in the mountains, and Natalie and I were walking up in the mountains, and this guy came running towards us, and, and he stopped. And he went, 60 symbols. And I went, OK, yeah. <laughs> and he lifted his shirt up, and he went, Heisenberg's equation. And he put his shirt down. <laughs> And he shut off, and it was absolute. And we just stood there looking at each other. It was really funny. But it's 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 nice and it's flattering. And one of the things you know, it's 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 good that that you know, people are off the people I, I bump into. You know, they're generally um, a lot of them are doing like PhDs or you know, sort of or at least some you know maybe maths at university or something like that. And they tell you that, and it's really nice to hear. And they'll they'll sort of say, oh yeah, and it was that video that that got me into it. And that that. Is great because it's the best thing about it. But yeah, it's uh, yeah, it does happen. It happens, I'd say, a lot in America. It's a lot, a lot. You bump, particularly if I'm on a campus in America, then you get um, and you, you know I'm, I'm visiting some collaborators there, and then I get some somebody bump into me, and uh, and then they're like, oh, okay. <laughs> I feel like from what I know of your wife, she is someone who keeps your ego in check. What does she do when it happens? Oh, she, they, both her and my kids, they just absolutely slaughter me for it. They're like, they start, I mean, they, they start calling me Gilderoy after Gilderoy Lockhart from, from the Harry Potter uh, books. Who, if you don't know, he sort of seems to revel in his own sort of celebrity. I don't have Gilderoy's levels, but uh, they accuse me of it. And um, yeah, they just, they just take the mickey. <laughs> Did the guy in the airport then try and sell you a credit card? No, he didn't. He knew better than doing that. <laughs> I tend to call that hot big bang, where the universe is full of radiation. That has to come at the end of this period of inflation. If you're not happy to accept these initial conditions of the hot big bang and you want to explain them, you want something that can explain them.